Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, the mystery box has been opened and its contents revealed, and today we're going to take a look at the Redivis RT97 portable repeater. In fact, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on the RT97. The first one is going to be an overview of the device. We're going to take a look at its features, its specifications, uh, take a little peek inside, um, and also the pros and cons of this repeater. But also be sure to watch till the end of the video because I'm going to talk a little bit about is the RT97 legal to use in the U.S.? Following that, I'll do another video uh, where I'll set it up and demonstrate its use. Well, with, with that said, let's dig into the Redivis RT97. Opening up the box, the RT97 portable repeater comes with an AC adapter and power cord, 12 volt DC power cable, and a USB programming cable. Then the repeater itself is housed in a heavy duty aluminum enclosure. On one side is a four pin power port, and on the other side is a UHF female connection, also known as an SO239. And, that's, and there's what appears to be a leather carrying strap on the top and a small LCD display and two, with two buttons on the front of the unit. There's no power switch, so the unit turns on uh, when the power cord is attached to a power source. Taking a quick look at the specs, the RT97 portable repeater is available in either a VHF or UHF unit and can be ordered with either a 5 MHz or a 10 MHz offset split. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, this is an FM analog repeater, has 16 memory channels, 10 watts of output power, wide or narrow band operation. CT CSS and DCS tone squelch, and it'll work on either 12 through 24 volts. Uh, dimensions are about nine and a half by seven and a half inches and uh, three inches thick. When you order the unit, uh, it can be customized according to your frequency choice. Uh, the reason for that is that the duplexer needs to be tuned to your frequencies. Uh, because of the small size, the duplexer is quite small, hence uh, the five or 10 megahertz frequency split choice. The du duplexer consists of six cavities that provide about 80 dB of filtering and isolation with only a one dB insertion loss. The duplexer is necessary so that the unit can simultaneously receive and transmit on one antenna. As you receive and transmit frequencies get closer together, uh, the cavities, you know, they're going to need to be larger to provide that same level of isolation. Plus, um, as you go lower in frequency, the cavities also get bigger. But if you keep the split at 5 megahertz or, or, or more, uh, you can overcome those physical limitations and come up with a very small package. But that also rules out you know, using this unit on uh, the VHF amateur radio bands as that split, that 5 megahertz split, is going to be wider than the entire frequency allocation. Now looking around inside the repeater, not only do you see the duplexer that we talked about, but also uh, the radio units, one for receive and another for transmit, encased in an aluminum block, and a circuit board that appears to provide some power filtering and um, programming control. I think the winning feature of the Redivis RT97 is its ease of setup and use. After I unpacked the unit, I plugged it in, um, and then uh, the unit had the frequency pair you know, I, I specified during the ordering process, and it all set up for channel one. Uh, the, the default CTCSS code was 136.5, um, and I could examine that by long pressing the channel select button. You know, frequencies and tones can be changed with the programming software, uh, but if you change the frequency, uh, the duplexers will also need to be retuned. You know, a process that's going to require some special equipment. I hooked the unit up to an outside antenna and programmed the channel into a handheld radio, and I was ready to go. I want to mention, though, that something about the frequency pairs of this repeater. Normally in the U.S., a UHF repeater will receive on the upper frequency and transmit on the lower one. Uh, with the RT97, this is reverse. It listens to the lower frequency and transmits on the upper one. So on your, on your radio, on your radio you're going to use to communicate with it, uh, you're going to need to transmit on the lower frequency and then receive on the higher one. And I don't know if that's a limitation has something to do with you know, how the duplexers are set up or something like that. Um, I'll have to investigate more on that. Uh, but there's nothing against the law or the rules or the FCC regulations about that. So you just need to be aware that the transmit and the receive frequencies on the repeater unit will need to be swapped. 
I'll demonstrate the use of the RT97 along with some um, range testing in an upcoming video, so you'll want to watch out for that. But let's look at the pros and cons of the Redivis RT97 portable repeater. Well, first, the good things that I like about the RT97 are its compact size, easy setup, weather resistant design, AC adapter with a DC power plug, and 10 watts of transmit power. Now the downside of the RT97 is follows. Only the 5 megahertz split on the UHF model can be used in the US. You know, there's no re re actual repeater controller in the box, so you don't have a repeater ID function, there's no timeout timers, or any other repeater functions that you may be used to. And also the transmit and the receive uh, frequencies are reversed from normal, uh, normal convention here in the US. Bottom line, uh, the RT97 is an all-in-one solution that gives you a portable repeater in a rugged small package. I see, and I see quite a bit of utility uh, for using this device for maybe event communications, emergency communication groups, uh, outdoor enthusiasts might like it, and you know, maybe neighborhood groups as a small neighborhood repeater. Now let's dig into the regulatory issues because I know the big question I'm gonna receive in the comments is, is this unit legal to operate in the US? And the short answer is yes, on the amateur radio bands. The RT97 does not have any um, FCC Part 90 or Part 95 a, a type acceptance certification that I'm aware of. So, you know, really legally it cannot be used um, on the LAN mobile or the GMRS bands. Although potentially it would make an excellent GMRS repeater. On the amateur radio bands, uh, there's two issues that um, could be potential sticking points for this repeater. First is the repeater control, and the second is identification. Amateur radio repeaters are devices that fall under FCC regulations, specifically Part 97.205. Paragraph D allows a repeater to function under automatic control. A control operator doesn't need to be at the control point to operate a the device. It functions automatically but a control operator does need to have a method to gain control of the repeater if it malfunctions. And to that point, many repeaters would use remote control as defined in uh, part 97.213, which would uh, be an auxiliary link or phone line to control the repeater. A remote controlled repeater can also function automatically or under automatic control, but um, also needs extra facilities to ensure that the control link doesn't malfunction. So the FCC requires remotely controlled stations, such as a repeater that is under remote control, to have a three minute timeout timer. Since this repeater is fully on automatic control with no remote control links, the timeout timer isn't a necessity. In case of malfunction, the best that you can do is to disconnect the power. That means that an individual would need to have ready access to the box to disconnect the power if it malfunctioned. So the RT97 may not be a good choice as a repeater located in a remote permanent site, but would be fine for temporary use in an area where easy access is available. The second item is uh, repeater identification. In part 97.119, each amateur station must transmit its assigned call sign on its transmitting channel at the end of each communication and at least at 10 minute intervals. Repeaters traditionally have a functions built into the controller to identify either by voice or Morse code the call sign of the repeater every 10 minutes that the repeater is active. This call sign could be the control operator or owner of the repeater, be it a club or an individual. Since there isn't a built-in identifier in the RT97, it would be up to the user to identify the repeater. So if you are um, having a conversation on it, you will, you will at least in 10 minute intervals need to sit, say your call sign and the repeater's call sign, such as KB9VBR on the KB9VBR repeater. An extra step, but uh, one that keeps you within the right side of the rules. You know, I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments on this, so please let me know if where my interpretation of the rules are wrong. Well, that's my first look at the Redivis RT97 portable repeater. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in uh, the comment area below. I'll have a follow-up video soon with a demonstration of the repeater, and I should be able to address some of your questions in that video. Otherwise, um, I may save them for my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. 
For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Maybe check out some of the recommended videos alongside me here. And also, press that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Pressing subscribe and uh, clicking the little bell notification will uh, inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day, and 73.